If you wear sunscreen religiously, you need to know this. Today, we're talking about vitamin D deficiency and how much sunscreen is too much sunscreen. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll give you one of the most important tips about vitamin D that you can't find on Google. Hi, I'm a board certified dermatologist, Dr. Laura Soong, and today we're talking about vitamin D and sunscreen. There are two camps that seem to be building where one says you need to wear sunscreen religiously and avoid the sun at all costs, vampires, and the other says you need vitamin D and sun exposure, therefore avoiding sunscreen altogether and bathing in the sun, sun worshipers. Spoiler alert, the latter exposes themselves significantly to skin cancer, while the former has shown to suffer from sometimes vitamin D deficiency. So first we need to talk about what vitamin D is. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that plays a crucial role in maintaining overall skin health. It's unique compared to other vitamins because your body can actually produce it on its own when exposed to sunlight. There's two main forms of vitamin D. There's vitamin D2, also known as ergocalciferol, and vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol. Vitamin D synthesis occurs in the skin when it's exposed to ultraviolet radiation, specifically UVB from the sun. The process begins when the precursor molecule called 7-dehydrocholesterol, which is present present in the skin is hit with UVB rays, and this triggers the conversion of 7-dehydrocholesterol into pre-vitamin D3. This pre-vitamin D3 undergoes a temperature-dependent isomerization process, turning it into vitamin D3, but there's other sources of vitamin D. So you can have dietary sources, so some foods naturally contain vitamin D or are fortified with it. For example, fatty fish like salmon and mackerel, egg yolks and beef liver are really good natural sources. Then there's the fortified foods like milk, orange juice and breakfast cereals, which are all uh, packed with a little extra vitamin D. And then of course, you can also supplement with oral vitamin D, which can be in the form of liquid or tablets over the counter from your local pharmacy. So let's talk about what vitamin D actually does for our bodies. Basically, it's a lot more than bone health. Yes, it helps us absorb calcium, keeping our bones strong and preventing conditions like osteoporosis, but it also affects our immune system. It helps us fight fight off infections. In fact, research shows that those with adequate vitamin D levels are less prone to viral infections like influenza. Also, vitamin D can contribute to a healthy heart, helps regulate our mood, supports insulin function, and even keeps our muscles in good shape. So getting enough vitamin D is really crucial. Studies have shown that vitamin D deficiency rates have increased dramatically with the industrialization of our society. And that makes sense because with industrialization and the building of taller buildings, the sun has been blocked from entering into our buildings and we've spent a lot more time indoors. We should know that vitamin D deficiency rates in society are increasing. In fact, the winter time in some locations, people are chronically vitamin D deficient especially around the poles like the North or the South Pole, your amount of UVB that's being allowed to enter past the atmosphere is minimal in the winter seasons, causing at certain zeniths like Edmonton, where we're located, to have chronic vitamin D deficiency or low levels, even in the winter time, even with sun exposure. So how does sunscreen affect vitamin D synthesis? Studies show that sunscreen does have a blocking effect on the synthesis of vitamin D, but the effectiveness of sunscreen depends on various factors as we know, including the thickness of application. Most people apply less sunscreen than recommended, about two milligrams per square centimeter, meaning that a significant amount of UV radiation can still penetrate the skin. It's important to note that only five to 30 minutes of sun exposure to the face, arms, and hands twice a week between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. is enough for your body to make adequate vitamin D levels. Yet the challenge arises when people stay indoors for prolonged periods as this reduces the overall UV exposure and increases the risk of vitamin D deficiency. Think wintertime in Canada. So while we know that sunscreen has a really important role in protecting us from skin cancer and the harmful effects of UV rays, it's important to find a balance because we do need adequate safe amounts of sun exposure for us to make some vitamin D and stay healthy and have adequate levels without compromising our skin health. On the other side of the coin, we really need to talk about the very real risk of skin cancer from UV exposure. A study in Australia has shown that around two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer in their lifetime, with approximately 2,000 Australians dying each year due to skin cancer. There's a misunderstanding developing in some areas 
areas of Australia who are concerned with vitamin D deficiency that have started exposing themselves to more sun. But prolonged sun exposure, especially in the summer, is not found to increase vitamin D levels continually, but it significantly raises the risk of skin cancer. Now, when it comes to maintaining optimal vitamin D levels, given that we face this challenge that the sun exposure can increase the risk of skin cancer, and also that in some seasons like the winter, there's just not enough UVB that makes it to the earth, oral supplementation becomes crucial. According to established guidelines from health organizations, including Osteoporosis Canada, oral vitamin D supplementation is recommended, especially in situations where sun exposure may be limited or inadequate. This is particularly relevant for individuals living in regions with limited sunlight during certain seasons or for those with indoor-based lifestyles. Now let's talk about how much oral vitamin D you should be taking. Current guidelines recommend a daily intake of around 400 international units, or IU, of vitamin D3 for adults. But emerging studies have raised concerns that this dosage might not be sufficient for everyone, and a substantial portion of the population still has low vitamin D levels, even with this recommended amount. Some experts advocate for higher daily intakes, like 800 to 1,000 international units, to ensure more comprehensive vitamin D sufficiency. But you need to be careful not to go beyond the recommended amount, only on the advice of your doctor, because you can get too much of a good thing and end up with vitamin D toxicity. Here's a really important tip that most people don't know. When it comes to vitamin D metabolism in your body, a critically important mineral that is needed alongside vitamin D is magnesium. It's not absolutely necessary to take magnesium with your vitamin D, but if your doctor suspects you are deficient or low in vitamin D, it's important that they also check your magnesium levels, as well as supplement with magnesium if they're low and you need to recoup that vitamin D. So here's the takeaway. Wear your sunscreen diligently to protect against skin cancer, but don't completely shy away from the sun. You can embrace the understanding that controlled sun exposure, even with sunscreen, contributes to vitamin D synthesis. And if you opt for sunscreen, complement it with oral vitamin D supplementation. This holistic approach helps ensure that you're not only safeguarding against skin cancer, but also nurturing your body with the vitamin D that it needs for optimal health. If you like these kinds of videos, you'll love my next one, where I reveal the absolute worst enemy of your skin and hair. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave us a comment and let us know what topic you want to learn about, subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.